Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit off the beaten path. So you might've seen this integral pop up in somewhere, if, especially if you're into the math meme community. Uh, it's it's given sometimes as the, the Wi-Fi password at a certain restaurant in China. Some people say it's the Wi-Fi password at a certain university in China. I don't even know where it's from or even if it's from China or not. But nonetheless, it's still a really fun integral for us to solve. And what's really nice about this, actually, this integral doesn't require um, very complicated integration techniques to solve, even though it looks like a rather nasty integral over there. It actually requ requires just very basic integration tools to solve. So I thought it'd be a great way for us to, you know, uh, stretch some of our integral properties here and see how they apply to different kinds of problems in ways you might not expect. So let's go ahead and try this one out. And I would drink, uh, encourage you to watch our previous video on properties of the definite integral. That'll be helpful if you have not seen that already. So there's a link over here, check that out. And uh, if not, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we wanna do here is I'm gonna take this four minus x squared, uh, square root of four minus x squared term here. I'm gonna foil it to everything else, right? And then we're, what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna break up what we have into two separate definite integrals, right? Because if you look here, I have a sum and I'm allowed to break up sums of functions into two separate integrals. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we have is we're gonna have the integral from negative two to two of x cubed cosine of x over two times the square root of four minus x squared dx don't forget the dx, plus have the integral from negative two to two of one half square root of four minus x squared dx. And again, all I did, multiply, I distributed the four minus x squared to each of these terms, and then split this up into a sum of integrals here, right? Nothing too fancy there. All right, now the next thing we want to do is we're going to look at this first integral over here, the the more complicated looking of the two. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look like there's a lot we can do here because you know we can't really we can't really simplify this any further. The square root doesn't break up nicely. Cosine of x obviously doesn't do anything else. But one thing we do notice, we might notice here, is that these bounds over here are symmetric, right? So we go from negative two to two, and so if it turns out that this function here is an odd function. Right? If this function here happens to be odd, this integral will actually just be zero. Because right? remember in the previous video, we talked about how odd functions, because of their symmetry about, about the origin and uh, line y equals x, they actually, um, this, uh, they, th any, if we have an integral with symmetric bounds here, that's gonna be zero, right? So that's something, that's a really cool thing we can apply here. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna see if we can verify if this function is odd or not. And if it does happen to be odd, then this integral actually works out very nicely. So let's go ahead and see if we can verify if this function is odd or not. Right? So let's do that in blue. Now, how can we verify if a function is odd or not? Well, for argument's sake, let's call this thing f of x. Right? Now, if f of x is odd, then what must be true is that f of negative x must equal negative f of x, right? So the negative sign sort of comes outside. So if f of x is odd, this thing must be true. So we need to verify that. And to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing that we're calling f of x here. And we're going to plug in negative x wherever we see an x, right? So let's do, let do that. So we have f of negative x is equal to negative x cubed cosine negative x over 2 square root of 4 minus negative x squared. And now we can just go ahead and simplify this a bit more. Negative x cubed is just, you know, it's just, just going to come out to negative x cubed because you can, because of uh, you have the extra negative sign because of the q because of the odd power here. Cosine of x, as it turns out, is actually even, right? So it's just going to be cosine of x over two, because right? the cosine of x is symmetric about the y-axis. So as it, it's an even function, and so therefore, f of negative x is just going to equal f of x. That's the analogous property of this to even for even functions. 
This guy right here is actually also an even function, but we can actually see how that algebra works out. Negative x squared is just going to be positive x, so x squared. So what we'll have here is just going to be 4 minus x squared. Wonderful. So that's that. That's about all we can really do with that. But now we can compare this to what we have over here for f of x originally. We can notice that they're exactly the same thing except for this minus sign up here. Right? Everything else is exactly the same except for that minus sign here. So we can conclude, therefore, that this whole thing, the f of negative x, is in fact just equal to negative f of x. Because of this, we can conclude f of x is in fact odd. And so therefore, the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f of x dx is going to equal 0. Which is really nice, right? Because this really, really complicated thing here now just ends up being 0, which is honestly just super cool. So what this is going to come out to is we're going to have all of this is just going to be 0, but we still do have this other integral here. So the, the integral from negative 2 to 2 of, we can actually bring this 1 half out front, 1 half 4 minus x squared dx. Now that right here is a much nicer integral to work with, but it might still be a little bit unclear about how we actually uh, go about doing that. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to recognize that this in fact here is the equation for a semicircle, right? Because if, if you can't see that, what I encourage you to do is set this thing equal to y. And then when you square both sides and then uh, bring the x to the other side, you'll see that this is actually, this comes out to the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. If you set this equal to y and then you do a little bit of uh, moving things around, you're actually going to get that. So this tells us that this is a semicircle, because it's only the positive root here, with a radius of 2, right? Because this side is r squared. So we can actually just go ahead and find that area geomet geometrically. So let's go ahead and draw that out real quick, just to give ourselves an aid. If we come down here, it's just going to be a, a semicircle with a radius of 2. So 2, 2, minus 2. So we can just, oh, that's quite nice. So we have that semicircle there. And we just need to find this thing's area. And that will be actually be our final answer here. So, of course, we do have this one half here. So, but the rest of it is just going to be the area of that semicircle. So, remember, the area of this is going to be pi r squared, but we need to multiply it by a half because we're only looking at a semicircle, not the full circle. So, it'll be one half pi radius is two, so it'll be two squared. Now, two squared is four, so that's actually going to cancel out with both these one halves. And so, what we're going to be left with in the end is just pi. So it's a really nice solution to a very complicated integral, but what's more really cool, what's what's more amazing about this is that the simplicity of work that we had to do to get to the solution is actually quite uh, quite nice because all we had to do is, you know, we had, to, we had to talk about odd and even functions a little bit, remember that one property here, and then we actually had to just remember that uh, the definite integral is just area under the curve, and so if we just remembered what this shape was, we could find that area pretty easily. So we didn't actually, actually have to do any complicated mathematics, just a few simple pre-calculus things with a little bit of calculus thrown in there, but we were still able to get a pretty nice solution to what's a very, very complicated integral. So that's, that's really my takeaway from this. It's a really fun problem. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this maybe helped your understanding of some of our properties and maybe just help you appreciate how cool this kind of um, calculus can be sometimes. So hope you find this hope you found this helpful, and I will see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!